Hello and welcome. Today we are driving a 2022 Mazda 3 Carbon Edition, and this is a hatchback. I would like to thank Flood Mazda in Wakefield, Rhode Island for allowing me to review this vehicle. Their link is down in the description below. This vehicle currently stickers for about $28,000 new, and it is powered by a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated four-cylinder engine, producing 186 horsepower and 186 pound-feet of torque, the same engine in the Miata. This is mated with a six-speed automatic transmission and is finished in a uh, polymetal gray, which is a Carbon Edition specific color. Alrighty, let's go take this for a drive. All right, so driving the Mazda 3 Carbon Edition hatchback. So far, it uh, it has very, very minimal wind noise. It has a little bit of tire noise, though. It's not bad, but it's, uh, it's definitely more present than the wind noise. They did a very good job with sound deadening. Visibility out of here, obviously I have a window sticker, but uh, overall visibility is pretty good. However, out the rear is definitely a challenge because the C-pillar is just too big it it's understandable this is how most hatches are but it's uh it's not great visibility out of the back because of it however with the rear view mirror it really isn't too bad directly out the back window and let's actually come to a stop quickly we'll put it in sport mode keep traction control on and we will do a zero to 60 right here and you can see the digital speedo right there okay and i'll floor it And 60. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, very similar to the Mazda 3 uh, sedan I tested, of course. It's the same setup, just in a hatch. The sedan actually had a bit of tire skip, so this didn't have that. It might just be because it weighs a little bit more due to it being a hatchback, of course. But uh, yeah, it's not bad getting up to speed. Although it's uh, a pretty linear power band, it's not excessively jumpy. And it, it, it doesn't die off on, on the top end, but it, it's just nothing, uh, nothing crazy. It's not supposed to be. But uh, the handling so far, so the I'm in regular drive mode, and uh, the steering is very direct. It's not heavy, but it's very direct and sporty. It feels very good in that aspect. And the brake pedal is, uh, it has some travel distance to it. Not tons, but it has a little bit of travel distance to it. And then um, the gas pedal in here is a floor-mounted pedal, so you'll push it down instead of having it come from the top and push in. You just push down, and uh, I enjoy that because my personal car has a floor-mounted pedal, so this feels pretty familiar to me. And uh, going over bumps right there, it feels very, very... Not a stiff suspension by any means, but it feels very sporty and good. However, laying on and off of the gas, you're kind of like throwing just a little bit in and out. It kind of like is... Uh, it's that type of a feeling whenever you just start tapping the pedal and then in and out. So that's the only gripe I have so far with that type of driving. If you put it in sport mode here, what it does, it, it really just changes how the transmission acts. It doesn't change anything with the suspension. This is just a typical coil suspension, but uh, it'll just kick it up a gear and it, it'll allow it to, you know, redline in gears if you were pushing it a little bit. But yeah, down low, it, it really isn't a bad engine. It's pretty torquey. It's pretty fun to drive like that. And in a parking lot here, it is uh, it's pretty easy to drive, pretty easy to deal with. Good visibility. I'm just testing it in a variety of conditions, of real world driving conditions. This car is very small and very maneuverable with a great turning radius. So this little uh, beach entry and exit, this is very easy to do luckily. Whereas the massive silver auto in front of me, it's taking forever. He is having a challenge. Okay, so if you put your foot down, it'll get up there in the RPMs, but it, it takes a little bit. The six speed isn't tuned to be overly sporty, so it's not really that eager to get going in, in normal drive mode. But if you uh, put it into sport like that, you'll see it'll jump right up and it, it'll be a lot grabbier. Yeah, it really likes to uh, swap gears when you're like that, which is how it should be. As for driving uh, typical side road speeds, it's uh, very, very quiet in here. Once again, tire noise, though, is a little more present than I would hope for. The wind noise is really subdued. There's nearly no wind noise. I can hear myself perfectly. However, there is that drone of tire noise, and uh, 
and just just that noise whenever you're going over bumps a little bit the tire noise however the suspension does handle bumps pretty well although it's very uh sporty feeling and uh there's like let's see yeah there is very minimal body roll in this it feels great in into corners going quickly but um it really does handle well with a really nice balance of being uh supple and soft enough throughout bumps it absorbs them well and it doesn't like send you crashing through them where it's gonna shake you like that so it uh it's very pleasant to drive and it, it really does feel like a nice sporty car yeah and these in these twisties feels very good very fun to drive and the steering it's not heavy but it's a very very good direct uh steering system they have in here they tuned it well and it uh Let's see. Yeah, it gives you pretty good feedback from the road. It, it really does uh, everything well so far in terms of steering and handling, in my opinion. Compared to a Civic or, of course, a Corolla, uh, this is by far the sportiest of the few. Although the, the Civic, if you get the right one, of course, if you get like an SI or a Type R, those are going to be sporty. But um, overall, this feels very, very nice to nice to drive. It, it like Mazda has been doing for years in most aspects, they're hitting above their weight class. The interior in here, in my opinion, is definitely, I think the interior in here is the best, uh, the best showing of a minimal one right now on the market. It looks great and, uh, you know, it has just, it has enough controls in hard buttons, but the, the infotainment system in here, it's angled towards the driver. It's bright and easy to see. It's, uh, it's very easy to live with and deal with. I would love personally having this as a daily driver car. At low speeds, it really does feel more like a sports car because although the power isn't necessarily there, unless you step up to the turbo, it can get up to speed pretty quickly. And with the the close to stiff and sporty handling, feels good. So like, let's see, I'll zip into this corner. So you get a lot of tire spin if you go into that. And that's traction control on with uh, normal drive mode. This car really does like to get out of its own way. I enjoy this. For the interior itself in here, um, you do get a lot of gloss piano black. That's my only main gripe with it. And you get a few blank buttons. So you do get a, uh, a couple on the steering wheel and you actually get four to the left of the steering wheel, which I don't really like, but that's okay. And then your lane departure warning is gonna show up right there, which is good. So for safety features in here, you get blind spot monitoring lane departure warning with lane keep assist, forward collision alert, rear cross traffic alert, and you do get auto leveling front headlights. So that's a pretty good setup for $28,000 this is. Really feels very, very nice. Alrighty, that'll just about do it for my thoughts on this Mazda 3 Carbon Edition hatchback. I very much enjoy this car. I really didn't expect it to be this exciting in the hatch. I thought the sedan was gonna be the more exciting one, but uh, I personally like this better. I, I think it just has the utility. It has the, you know, the good storage space. It's a very usable vehicle in many, many ways. And uh, I very much enjoy driving it. And for $28,000, it hits far above its weight target class in, um, in the interior, in the handling, and really just overall in direct competition with its peers. I would very much buy this car my, on my own. All right, thank you to Flood Mazda in Wakefield, Rhode Island for allowing me to review this vehicle and make sure to check out my review of it. Uh, just a stationary review going in depth about all its features and the interior currently on my channel. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe and take care.